Hi everyone, my name is Chen and I'm a software engineer in Bytance. And today my topic is embracing NetKit across a million servers, what should we do? So first, let's give a brief introduction about what is NetKit. NetKit is a new network device like Vith created in pair and it can be used in container networking, but it has a much better performance and it's merged in kernel 6.8 so since we all know that NetKit can, can achieve a better performance, why not start using it from now? But it's not so easy to use NetKit in a production environment because first, stability is top priority. Nobody has tried NetKit in large scale. And second, even NetKit is attractive, but using kernel 6.8 is difficult because most companies are not so aggressive in adapting new kernel. Taking us, Bytance, as an example, we plan to use kernel version 6 probably uh, two or three years later. So, so far, we're still using kernel version 5. So the first things we need to do to use NetKit is backporting NetKit to the kernel version we are implementing in our data center. And we decide to backport NetKit to kernel version 5.15. And here's the list of features we have backported. The first is NetKit. And is that also the TCX feature along with NetKit. And we also try to backport NetKit to kernel version 5.4, but it requires additional backport of BPF link, which leads to other conflicts and a more strict code review. So eventually we decide to choose 5.15. And now once we have the kernel ready, we need a graceful upgrade because we need both CNI and the kernel upgraded to use NetKit but the upgrading pace is not aligned because the kernel is upgraded by a different team. So we don't know which one gets upgraded first. If we, we, we firstly upgrade CNI, then we upgrade kernel, it's easier because once the machine is rebooted, we have the CNI and kernel both ready and we can create NetKit for new containers. But if we first create an uh, upgrade kernel, that means at the very beginning, we still create width for new containers. And then once we upgrade the CNI, we will create NetKit for later containers. That means we might have width and NetKit coexist in the same node. And then we need the compatibilities with width pair. So compare with width, what else should be taken care of? First, like I mentioned before, we need compatibilities between NetKit and width. So don't use BPF redirect peer for help functions for NetKit v connections because the packet will get dropped here because the packet is not at, uh, the SKB is not at TC ingress hook point. And second, we also need to manage BPF links for NetKit because it's not attached to TC hook point anymore. It needs BPF links for persistence. And that means we also need to recycle the BPF links once we want to destroy it the net key, the device or we detach the eBPF. And before we have get we get everything prepared, we also need to handle what if anything bad happens because at this moment we cannot guarantee that NetKit works properly as our expected. Uh, so what if CNI fails to create new NetKit device? We might fall back to V or we let the CNI return arrow to container D or we create a backdoor for this thing like to stop using NetKit. Or maybe the NetKit creates successfully, but the NetKit eBPF is not functioning. Then we also need to fall back to TC and we must delete the NetKit eBPF. And so far we believe that we have everything prepared and we start to push NetKit and the new kernel version online. And so far, this is our achievement. We have CNI supporting NetKit deployed in dozens of clusters and the kernel rolling upgrades simultaneously. And so far, we, have, we haven't seen any accidents reported related to NetKit. So I'm confident to say that NetKit is trustable. And now let's talk about the benefits of using NetKit. First, we have the expected benefits of using NetKit. Uh, the in, we have the improvements in throughput and we have improvements in the save of CPU usage, but it's all discussed before, so we'll skip this part. Let's come to the next. We have some unexpected benefits of using NetKit because ben, a NetKit unintentionally solves problems resulting from using Vith. 
And all these problems are related to the software interrupts in the VIF backlog queue since NetKit eliminates software interrupts and then we don't have this problem anymore. The first is the high CPU load when we use in VIF. Uh, it's a known issue and it's already fixed in the latest kernel, but since we are still using kernel version 5.4 and 5.15, we still have this problem. We have the, uh, the SKB record RXQ will cause, uh, at the same node, there will be only one core to handle all interrupts from all VIP device. And why this problem gets solved by NetKit? Because NetKit eliminates software, inter uh, software interrupts and the backlog. And the second, we have packet disordered when using VIP with RPS disabled, because we all know Packets in the backlog queue, which for its standard CPU to handle its soft interrupt when RPS is disabled. And the send packets in the container are assigned to different CPUs by the process. So that means all send packets from the container in the backlog will wait for its own CPU to pick it up. But because of the uneven load distribution among CPUs, it might happen that the prior packets may be processed later due to the response time of each software interrupt is different. But this is no longer a problem anymore because like I said before, NetKit eliminates software interrupts and eliminates the backlogs and all problems related to this are solved. So actually it's, we are actually, uh, it is out, out of our expectation, but we're happy to see the result because we spent a lot of time on this to see if we can find an effective way to solve these problems from this, but it's difficult. But once we migrate from this to NetKit, it's no longer a problem. So I think it's, we are like motivated to widely deploy the NetKit in our data center. And that's all, thank you.